you want to be somebody in this city? An Apex legend. Well, you ain't getting nowhere without a gun. Not without a ride. And not without a squad at your back. If you want to prove yourself to be the best, you're gonna have to take a step into Season 22 marks the addition of the sixth map Apex Legends has received. It's actually the longest period we've had with no new map in the game. A bit more time was clearly made to let this map cook while Broken Moon got its own revamp in Season 21. But while the wait was long, I can't say that what we've gotten isn't welcome. So as we start to jump into E-District, I want to explore the map and give my initial thoughts on the design as a whole in a more casual style of video. Don't expect as many scripted bits or funny bird animations today. Before we dive in, I want to say that everything I'm discussing is only my initial impressions of the map. It usually takes a long time to truly learn an Apex map, and clearly E-District hasn't been out for very long. But I still want to talk about it since it's so unique compared to other maps in the game. With that said, let's get started. E-District is a map located in the center of a large, cyberpunk-esque cityscape, with all of the action taking place in a dense urban environment. Huge skyscrapers are used to divide up the smaller portions of the map, with the smaller buildings being used as your play space. The landscape itself is by far one of the most breathtaking styles I think we have seen. The neon colors and darker atmosphere lends itself to a very picturesque view. Cyberpunk environments generally try to crowd you in their huge cities, make you feel small in comparison, and the overall layout of the map definitely lends itself to that, but still has plenty of space to move around in without it feeling claustrophobic. The smaller details on the map weren't ignored either. With so many buildings scattered around, the design team did a really good job of making a large variety to play in. The fast food and arcade locations are easy to spot with their large mascots standing above their tinier buildings, helping you differentiate them from afar. Colors are used to help spot specific layouts too in the taller designs, and the multi-story buildings have a fun layer of design to them, usually having some form of storefront layout on the bottom floor with residential rooms going up. It gives you an idea of what places may have been like before it was turned into a Bloodsport arena. Many of these building designs lend their inspiration from World's Edge directly. You'll find yourself in very familiar territory if you've frequently dropped at Fragment or Skyhook throughout the years while playing on E-District. In fact, that almost goes for the entirety of the map. There's a level of density that E-District has that no other map can really compare to. The only real locations that have any comparison to any of E-District are Fragment, Skyhook, and Skulltown. Skulltown especially in the smaller building designs in places like Draft Point and Stadium. There is an incredible amount of effort made to make no space wasted on the map, and that includes outside of the POIs. We have small alleyways, no-name clusters of buildings, and layouts that five years ago probably would have been POIs by themselves. It's fascinating to find that no matter where you are on the map, you can find yourself either a building or some form of layered verticality to play around and use to your advantage. What that does mean, though, is that the map as a whole is very, very dense. And while that is welcomed by most veterans of the game, myself included, it does come with a particular caveat that's difficult to ignore. With so many buildings to account for, places for enemies to hide or move around in, the map itself can sometimes be very overwhelming to play in. It's almost crazy how easy it is to close the gap against an enemy in nearly every POI. You have so many options to break up sightlines that a lot of engagements push into close quarters the moment teams spot each other. This often favors the player that knows well how to maneuver in tight environments, attack from the right angles, and get out of dodge when pushed too hard. What this doesn't favor is the casual player, whose lack of overall game sense will make it harder to track the teams bouncing all over the place. I expect a lot more players are going to struggle to keep up on the map, especially as a lot of players try out MNK again after the aim assist nerf. There are some areas that are more opened up. The center of Energy Bank is a particularly good example, and also an example of a risky thing E-District does, placing a POI at the center of the map. We've seen plenty of times a center POI absolutely ruin the distribution of players on a map, but Respawn have used an unconventional strategy to combat this, namely by making the center POIs really big. The two recent ones of Quarantine Zone and Energy Bank avoid their center problems by just being large enough for a lot of teams to be in. And if there is an engagement in the POI, you have plenty of space to move around it. That's, of course, if you have enough exits to get out of the center. Energy Bank, thankfully, has plenty of ways of entering or leaving the POI that should let you avoid getting gatekept in or out of it. But depending on the ring pulls, you'll still have situations where you have to fight through a bad choke to win. 
One particular area I found interesting was the area just north of Viaduct. Viaduct itself has a rather unfortunate position on the map, but this area in particular is... odd. You see, Viaduct and Shipyard are connected by this huge highway. It cuts through a large portion of this part of the map. It's rather open and pretty hard to hold a spot without getting angled, but when you do have control of it, you have a lot of power since it overlooks the entire field around this southern section. Meaning that if you are unlucky enough to be the team underneath when somebody is holding it, it's going to be hard to make any moves when they have all the space in the world to find an angle at you. That's all without mentioning the height control it has over the entire POI of Draft Point. It quite literally overlooks the entire place, and with how small the buildings are, you better hope the highway team doesn't have a fuse. Despite this one area having a huge sightline advantage, most of the map doesn't actually have too many issues with sightlines. Neon Square is a great example, as the highest location on the map is definitely powerful, but the other buildings around it break up the field of view that a team holding that height has. There's a lot of other height locations in the POI as well, but the presence of buildings equal to or taller than them always keep the team controlling the height in check. They can't just have them for free, or else they'll get caught out with a sniper to their back. Other areas of the map do have huge sightlines, but I don't have enough experience yet on the map to say whether these sightlines are truly too oppressive or just strong by themselves. We'll find out as our playtime grows. But there's a question I am getting asked anytime E District gets mentioned. Is it competitively viable? The real answer is I'm not sure. While it takes a while to learn a map casually, learning if a map is competitive takes far longer. You need experienced pros at the highest level of the game performing scrims on it for weeks to really find out whether a map works competitively. So I can't say for sure if E-District has a place in ALGS or Comp in general, but I can make an estimated guess, and I guess that E-District has a very good chance. I say that because one of the biggest values E-District has is playable space. There's so many nooks and crannies you can get into that make for viable endgame spots. We have all the staple spots you'd find in places like Skyhook, but you also have a lot more verticality that adds on more height or low ground locations teams can use to their advantage. I especially like the new stalls and shops that are scattered around the map. They are small, enclosed rooms that only have exits in one direction. They're locations that you have to go all in on to control, and need good defensive utility to keep them from being pressured in. I imagine all the Watson teams and comp salivating at having a fully enclosed location to keep their gen in. Or even these buses that harken back to the RVs, risky locations that could have huge payoffs if held until the endgame. In fact, I think the endgames are going to be a huge plus in the favor of E-District's comp viability. But there are some questions to be had on the early game. The rotations from most of the map look okay, nothing quite like the monster that is Northern Olympus, but there are some points that definitely raise some concerns though. Boardwalk, Viaduct, Old Town, and Blossom Drive in particular look like they can be trouble to rotate through. And if any of them are anywhere close to a dome in macro play, then that will definitely take a hit for the map as it only has 17 POIs to begin with. Any one of them being really bad to play from can really hurt its chances. There are a handful of no-name locations around Energy Bank's walls that do look like they could have some chances of being comp viable, but their lack of beacons and poor loot would leave them as crumbs left over for the rest. The other option is to split a POI, but we're far too early to tell whether any of these locations could be split well enough. Probably the biggest point against the map competitively, however, is definitely the loot. Not that there isn't enough of it, far from that actually, it has more loot than any map that has come before it. The issue stems from how you gather it. With so many locations being a dense smattering of buildings, you have to find yourself weaving through multiple floors, rooms, alleys, and market stalls to gather your supplies often only having one or two tarps in each spot. Couple that with players' unfamiliarity with the layout of the map, and where to go for loot, and you have a hotbed for confusion and frustration. Again, as more time is played on E-District, these issues will not be as big of a deal, especially in a comp environment. But there is credence to give to how poor it can feel to loot an entire building and come out with only two or three items. There's a lot to debate around how E-District will be competitively. But there is one thing that we can all agree on. We want to see it played. It's a pretty common sentiment that World's Edge and Stormpoint have grown a bit stale. And with the Broken Moon update and E-District, we have for the first time in a while, a chance to revitalize competitive with something brand new. And once Champs is over with, we'll all be excited to see if E-District can bring something that we have never seen before. So when that day comes, when E-District is fully tried out, I'll be looking forward to it. For now, we get to play on it casually.
And I can say for sure that it's a fun place to be. I don't really have my usual outro today, so let me thank you for watching. And as always, thank you to my supporters on YouTube and Patreon. If you're looking to find out more about the stuff I'm doing around the internet, you can check out my Twitter and Twitch to keep yourself updated. Otherwise, this has been Moreover. Have a lovely day.